Does your images change color while you upload them to Instagram or any other online platform? I know, that's a pathetic experience. Hey there, this is Unmesh and this is the story of a typical photographer like you and me. We click a wonderful landscape, an amazing portrait. We import it into Lightroom. We edit it, we spend hours and hours editing it. Then you import it into Photoshop, you spend hours and hours correcting the distractions, improving the skin tones. But when you transfer that photo to your phone and when you upload it to Instagram, the colors go yuck. Now let me show you an example. This is one of the photos that I clicked and edited. This is the finished edited image. Now, this is what it showed when I uploaded it into Instagram. The colors are totally off. It's yuck, it's filthy. What to do? We as photographers are super picky about two things and those are sharpness and color. We'll take care of the sharpness in other videos but in this video, I promise you that after watching this video, you will never have to worry about color transformation across platforms. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's hit it. To solve the problem, it is very essential that we understand what is causing the problem, what is the root of the problem and for that, we need to understand a concept called color space. Now what is color space? Well, color space is the range of colors available for a digital file. So every digital image, be it a JPEG, be it a TIFF, be it a PSD, every image file in your computer, in your phone is being assigned a color space, that is a range of colors which is available to that image. Now let's go a little bit more in depth and let us clear a lot of doubts that you might be having right now. So what is color space? Look at this image, every image has been assigned with a color space. Now if you go down to a little arrow right here which is often ignored, if you click it, oh oops what happened, if you click this arrow and if you go to document profile. It will show you that's untagged RGB. That's the color space of this image. Now, there are four common color spaces that you might come across in day-to-day -day situations. A point to note here is that some color spaces are larger than the other, which means that some color spaces have more range of colors than the other. But an important point to note here is that there are no bad color spaces. Color spaces with lesser range can sometimes prove to be better than color spaces with more range. It totally depends upon what are you using the image for. Suppose I save this image with a color space that supports just 10 colors. I'm simplifying this, usually you'll be dealing with millions of colors but suppose I save it with a color space that supports 10 colors, that, had, that has a range of 10 colors. Now, my mobile screen, suppose it supports just 10 colors. Now if I transfer this image to my phone that supports just 10 colors, this image will look exactly as I had seen in my laptop. Now suppose I save the same image with a color space that supports 100 colors, okay? Now when I transfer this to my phone, those 10 colors will be represented with complete accuracy but what will happen to those remaining 90 colors? they will either get clipped, they will either get replaced by some random colors, they will either be totally off or they will be not seen at all. So the whole point of this video in short is that you need to save the image in a color space that is supported by Instagram, that is supported by your phone, that is supported by your website wherever you're uploading the image. So that's that. Now the four most common color profiles or color space, color space is also called color profile, that you'll come across in day-to-day -day situations are these, I'm sorry, these, okay, Pro Photo RGB, Adobe RGB, sRGB and CMYK. Now Pro Photo RGB supports the widest range of colors. Now you might say, okay, let's use Pro Photo RGB for every photo. Number one drawback, it's a huge file. Number two drawback, Pro Photo is not even supported in your monitor screen. A laptop screen supports up to Adobe RGB. My screen supports sRGB. And 
Most of the laptop screens and monitors support sRGB only if you go for very expensive, super expensive laptop screens, they go up to Adobe RGB. None of them supports Prophoto RGB. So Prophoto is the widest and then they are in the descending order. So Adobe RGB is smaller than Prophoto, sRGB more smaller, CMYK is somewhat similar with sRGB but CMYK is more used in print purposes. Now, whenever you import a photo, from your DSLR, especially if it is a raw photo, it will be saved in most cases in Pro Photo RGB because Pro Photo supports the widest range of colors. Now, sometimes your camera can see more than Pro Photo, but it will be saved in Pro Photo because up until now, it's the only format that supports the widest range of colors. Now, if Pro Photo is not supported in monitor screens, it is supported, you can see it, but the colors will not be that accurate. If you cannot see it in your screen, then what's the point? Well, the point is when you edit an image, you can bring in more colors to your images. So suppose you're increasing your saturation or vibrance. Suppose you're amplifying the colors of your image. Your images will not clip. Why? Because it has more colors than you can actually see. So it has more in the accessories. So let me show you an example. Let me go to a Lightroom and let me import this image. I don't know what's happening to Lightroom today. Right click and edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. This will load up in Adobe Photoshop just in a minute. And while that happens, we'll just wait. I'm just gonna look in the camera and look away. So yeah, it's still processing, it's still going. How are you? How are things? How's life? How, um, how's your family? Good? All right, amazing. So let's load it. Now, let's zoom in a little bit and let's look at the color space. So we have already clicked this document profile and as you can see, the color space is Pro Photo RGB 16 bit. This is the best color profile an image can have because in this image you can play with colors more than you would have done with an sRGB. In this you can go to more extent without clipping and without the image showing its pixels. So you can go haywire with saturation and hue. Not too much, but this has more range than an sRGB. Now let us understand more clearly and this, the show, seeing this diagram, it will become more clear to you as to what these color profile actually mean. If you're getting confused, this will solve it. Have a look at this diagram. So this is the whole area of color that is visible, that a human eye can see. The whole range of colors that is visible to human eye. Now, this triangle, this black triangle is sRGB. Now only these colors can be shown in sRGB color profile or color space. Let me highlight that. So this is the sRGB. Any color outside this triangle will not be shown, cannot be shown if you have saved the image in sRGB format. Now let's look at the CMYK. Now CMYK is a little comparable to sRGB, is a little smaller, but in some places it's bigger than sRGB. It can render blues and greens a little bit more better than sRGB and CMYK is used for printing purposes. Now if you look at Adobe RGB, it's bigger than both of them. Let me just decrease the opacity. As you can see, Adobe RGB is bigger than both sRGB and CMYK. So it shows more colors. Then why would you not use Adobe RGB? Because your phone screen just supports sRGB. Now let's go to Pro Photo. This is the biggest and it covers most, most of the visible light range. And in some areas, it also covers the light range, range of light, which cannot be even seen with our visible eyes. So this is amazing. And there's never been a color profile that could show all of the range. Now here's the thing, which one should you be using? Well, it totally depends upon what do you want to do with your images. If you want to edit your photos, Pro Photo RGB is the best. Why? Because it supports the widest range of colors. Now, if you import your photos from Lightroom to Photoshop, by default, it will import it in Pro Photo RGB format. Now, next up is Adobe RGB. Adobe RGB, why should we use it? When you have Pro Photo RGB, which supports more wider range of colors than Adobe RGB, why should you use Adobe RGB? 
The thing is, Adobe RGB is supported by some expensive laptops, expensive monitor screens, unlike Prophoto RGB, which no screen can show. So if you want to watch your images with most accurate colors and most high quality settings and stuff, Adobe RGB is the one for you. Also, if you want to print your images very professionally, I'm not talking about local printing or home printing. I'm talking about printing where you have to spend a fortune <laughs> in those printing. You have to use Adobe RGB. Next up is sRGB. It's for everything else. It's the universal image format for screens. It, it's used in Photoshop. I'm sorry. It's used in Facebook. It's used in WhatsApp. It's used Snapchat, any website, anything for the web, anything for the screen. sRGB is going to be your go to color profile. If I save my image in pro photo, what mistake I used to do when I first began uploading it into Instagram, I used to save my images in Adobe RGB or pro photo RGB. And when I uploaded it into Instagram, the colors went off. Why it went off? Because Instagram or any other screen supports sRGB and the conversion was really, really bad because what happened was the colors which was outside, which were outside the range of the sRGB diagram, those colors were, now I got a message, those colors were, were either replaced or were either clipping. So that was one of the problems that I was facing. Next up is CMYK. CMYK is comparable to sRGB and it's used mostly for print purposes. So these are the four color profiles, which are also known as color spaces that you have to keep in mind while you're working with images. Now let's move on to a little bit of practical stuff on how to actually upload your images to Instagram. So we'll use the previous image that we used as an example just now. Now, if you go to file and directly go to save as and you save it as a normal JPEG, what's going to happen is the colors will be totally off if you upload this into Instagram, why? The color profile does not match with that of the Instagram. Instead, what do you have to do? You have to go to edit, then convert to profile, watch. Watch, source space, what does it show? Profile, pro photo, RGB. Now, Instagram does not support pro photo RGB, nor does any other online platform. They do, but they'll do a conversion, which you'll not be satisfied with. So you want to do the conversion. So we need to change the profile to working RGB sRGB from pro photo to working RGB sRGB watch and click OK. Now colors will change just a little bit, but you won't be able to notice this. Now, if you go to file, save as and save it as a JPEG, make sure JPEG is selected. Let's save it in desktop. And if you click save, and now if you upload this to Instagram, your colors will be totally fine. Also, one of the most important things that you must make sure while you upload it to Instagram or any other web platform is that you change the image to 8 bits. So go to image, mode, 8 bit channel. So 16 bit is for editing purposes, 8 bits, it is half the size and it is supported in the World Wide Web. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope this video helped. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and do consider subscribing to our channel to get more videos like this in future. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.